Hello, gang. Welcome to Locked Up, episode seven. I'm not sure anyone's actually even watching these, but it's very cathartic for me. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to teach you how to, well, not really teach you, but I'm cooking slow-cooked ribs for four and a half hours, uh, or five hours in total. We do a little gym workout uh, with my shirt off, which I apologise for. Um, Chloe bullies me and breaks the dishwasher. Um, and a little shout-out before we get into this week's video with some of the comments from last on my YouTube channel. Um I will go with the first one, which is from Eloise Burns. Says, Loving these videos, especially all the shit chat. Please do a retake of the Mr. and Mrs. Challenge. Watch the space. This will be coming. Um, Rob Tarbox says, you guys are brilliant. Keep smiling. Stay safe. Bring on more videos. And the last one, loving this. Wish I had Chloe cooking me some amazing meals. Well, maybe a Colin rather than a Chloe. She's gorgeous, but I prefer men. I'd love to see the, the facial oil routine too. Maybe Chloe can do a little video showing you how her face shines. I mean, I've got some beard oil in manicure but anyway thanks so much for tuning in if you like this video please share please subscribe and enjoy and comment and and we'll set us some challenges because we will do anything at this point in time well in reason this is so meant to be da, 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 another day another bacon sandwich hello friends and the morning i've got to stop singing i've got the worst voice in the world every episode a hundred times yeah. I'm like, <laughs> uh, special coffee got, got around coffee section not ready for the big boy machine this is uh, the different coffee company they deliver and they are the best 1% or 2% of coffees in the world put into pods. Why do they deliver if they're a coffee company? Oh, not today, sun's shining, we don't need any depressing chat, thank you. You've probably figured out from the locked ups, if you've been watching them, that there is a sort of, they've all merged into one, there's not really one specific day. Today is actually a Saturday, so we're having a little bit of a treat this morning. You're having a bit of a treat. I'm having a treat, old... Misery's not having a treat today. I am on a diet break, but I feel I've had one bowl of cereal and I feel very, very full. There's a huge bumblebee in the conservatory. Oh, bumbler. Which would indicate that I need to stop eating. Yeah, that's the sign. That's yeah. the sign. If the bumblebee's in better shape than you are, then it's time to call it a day. I mean, I am. It's going to dissolve either way. It's going to dissolve either way. I mean, but how did you think? Look, the, the, the apparatus doesn't even fit. It doesn't even fit the hole. That's why it's just... I don't think it makes much sense to have a big round disc where things go. But rather to have a small entryway where things go. Yeah, you've got a small entryway where things go. Thank you. You fit all sorts of big things in there. So I suppose <laughs> I do agree with your thoughts. I don't own any big things. Well, you have lots of big things in there. Um, I can't, but I mean, she's... No, don't throw more salt in there, you lunatic. I, I, I pray to God that the, the rinse aid slot... Who's Gerd? Gerd, I pray to Gerd that the rinse aid slot's going to empty because you can't. I mean, the shame. Just shame on you. I've done it before. Have you? Yeah, <laughs> that's why I always thought oh, it was. Fucking hell. <laughs> so this is the kind of nasty stuff that my wife does on a regular basis where I accidentally get food in my extensive beard and she then makes videos of it. <laughs> it's an extensive manly beard. So we're sitting in our little area outside. I've been working editing stuff, <laughs> Chloe's been inside, and we decided to watch The Last Dance. We're having some barbecued chicken, some rice, some veg. It wasn't really barbecued. Well, it was cooked on the Traeger. Chicken confit. <laughs> chicken confit from Field of Flower, very good. Um, and we've enjoying ourselves. Chloe's uh, got a blonde crashing wave of hair, and I had a piece of, a segment of rice in my beard, but it's now gone. Um, this is a leisurely Friday evening, relaxing, just taking it real James, easy. James, probably that if I, to stop complaining about how I look on camera, and if I had that many insecurities about it, that I should sharpen myself up. Yeah. yeah. But how many women out there are sharpening? And probably a lot of women yeah. are sharpening. A lot of women are sharpening. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Women are real. Everyone's real sharp except you. You're blunt. Mm, just, you're as sharp as a potato. I just don't care. Oh, no, yes, but, no, yeah, but no, I, if you don't care, then don't care. <laughs> Another day out. In the queue. Chloe's one of those really annoying people who makes phone calls in the queue and like talks really loudly. Upsets everyone. Sorry that I uh, actually not, was checking in with my dad. He's not on the wrong he's on the wrong spot. Don't be ignored. Well he's, he's, he's a bit, he needs, someone needs to notify him because there's the two little spot on the floor there, but absolute rigsman. <laughs> Rigger Tony. Um yeah, yeah. do you wanna notify him or not? No, James, you're being annoying. <laughs> Do you want to, what, 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 what do you do? Oh, you want to get a trolley? Fucking rude woman. <laughs> Afternoon gang, We've got a very special day today. We're gonna to do a long cook on the Traeger. Chloe ain't interested, 
but she will be when she sees the result. We're gonna go slow cook pork ribs, it's gonna take five hours on the Trader Pro something something. Um, so it should be very, very nice. It's a recipe I got off a friend, done it before and it turned out incred. So we'll see how it goes. Here you have the ribs. I've taken all the silver skin off. That's what the rank bit sitting underneath here. So I've just washed my hands, so I don't want to touch it. But this is gonna be prepared and cut on very shortly. So I've mentioned we're doing the, uh, the slow cooked ribs today. So it's gonna take about five hours. We've got the Traeger Pro Duga ribs are on now so they're going to be on for about two and a half hours and I've just put a dry Traeger rub on either size base of garlic and black pepper and then we're going to pack them with um, foil and uh, brown sugar another two and a half hours and then some barbecue sauce it's going to be mm, beautiful now the ribs have been cooking for four and a half hour, well four hours and 45 minutes it's about time we checked on them look at them bad boys get in my face and mouth please put a bit of barbecue sauce on there we'll top that up now i've gone for the old traeger texas spicy on these ribs they are going to be unbelievable, Jeff. I'm not going to lie to you. It's just going to be half on the table. Right, someone's fiddled with it, haven't they? The fiddler. And I want to sleep with you in the Saturday workout days. Yeah. Excellent. You're on camera. <laughs> it's actually going to the lyrics of a song that you can't hear right now. Yeah. Tell us what the song is, they'll understand the dancing. Peaceful, easy feeling by the Eagles. God, babe. I'm swirling and you're just jiggling along, serenading me. Lovely. Oh, let's go on, do it again. We missed it, we missed it. Oh, 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 lovely. Shake your tits. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> technological whiz while in lockdown like I'm a tech nerd like I waste all my money on technology but I find myself setting up DJ live streams I've just got one actually DJ live streams conference calls um, now doing dual recording on a mental health podcast just the absolute ca carnage setup cables things I think it's quite good it has proved that people can work from home and can be trusted to do everything but also you know it is a bit fiddly having to get the stuff and the internet in this country is toilet.
I know I said that any uh, and everybody at home needs to be a technological wizard. Would you like to check out the uh, the sound booth that we've built, which is where my wife's going to live? Make sure that the microphone doesn't touch the thing. Do you want to yeah. tell them why we're doing? Yeah, we're doing this because Chloe's recording an audio book. Chloe's recording a special book with people that we can't mention, and that's why she's doing a little sound sound nest to record the audio part of it to help people during quarantine. But it's top secret with top secret authors, so pretty much not going to say any more about it, are we? Yeah. See you later. Now you're just in the realms of fantasy, building a little fort. Why are you building a fort? I've always wanted a fort. Well, well, I mean, this looks like a massive fire hazard, if I'm not going to lie. A fire hazard? Yeah. yeah. A blanket to close in a living room. How is that a fire hazard? I just don't understand how you think this is acceptable. Right, Chloe, you don't have to dismantle the room. It's a fucking... You don't I understand anything. The sounds, sounds, <laughs> sound goes forward. Oh, God. This is what happens when people don't know anything about anything. Baby, you, you're literally, it's just all going to collapse because you've made a massive meal of it and then we have to dismantle it, you muppet. Well, we're now going to not be able to watch TV because you've built a whole... No, don't start, no, don't put more in, honestly, no, babe. No, it's not. This is, honest to God, what I have to put up with all the time. She just gets carried away with Look, everything. Tell the fucking gardeners to stop. Right? No, no, we don't have gardeners. We don't have gardeners. It's, it's the council. Should I just say, guys, can you just... No, no, you don't. They're being paid to do a job by the council and just leave it. You'll be fine. You're having a nice time in your little fort. Yeah, I am. Are you having a nice time in boring old living room? Why? Why? This is, you, we've made such a mountain out of a molehill. If we have kids though, they would love that. Well, we don't, so. <laughs> we don't. We absolutely don't have any kids. What are you doing in there? <laughs> I don't really want to come out even though we're done. Stay in your little fortress of sadness. Okay, you Is... look very bored in the normal living room. <laughs> well, it looks very hot Ew. in there. <laughs> Thank you for having us. It's um, one of my favourite topics. And I feel like, James, you've been working with a couple of mental health charities recently. So you're getting more kind of aware of the, the spectrum. Yeah, I mean, look, I, you know, obviously mental health is massively uh, prevalent in sport. It's something that I've, I've worked very hard on myself with seeing a, a, you know, a sports psychologist and that kind of side of things. But also, I do a lot of kind of uh, keynote speaking. The last thing I did was to speak for uh, at UBS about mental health to about a thousand people uh, and my views on, on, you know, dealing with certain certain aspects. But, but you know, I... It's obviously something that's never evolving topic, and I'm, I'm far from qualified. When I was uh, a rugby player, you know, I did never really had holidays, never really had a lot of time off. So this is kind of the first ever long, pr prolonged rest I've ever had. So I wake up every day, you know, with a, with a with a to do list and try to stick to a routine, get that done, go to bed, and wake up the next day without worrying about where it ends because it will end. Everything ends, you know. In, 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 so you, I've just been more patient about it, and I think, you know, like Chloe. She was saying yesterday, you know, she misses her family very much. I miss my family again, you know, but I've just I've compartmentalised it because I can't I can't control when I see them, so I've stopped worrying about it, which is you know, healthy in some ways, but pretty unhealthy in others because it means you don't look forward to stuff or, or you know get too down about stuff. You just sort of sit in the middle. Half wonder if it is actually quite fitting for us because you have made me you've made me more of a grinder, like more yeah. of a tough kind of tough cookie, especially in terms of work for sure. And I think maybe, I mean, hopefully, I've made you, you have a made bit more thoughtful more emotional, emotionally. Yeah. You have, you have. You've maybe much more empathetic. And, and also, like yesterday, I was so proud of it, Chloe, because, you know, I, I, I'm very, I, like, I do go in quite hard. Uh, obviously, within, like, within, within reason, it's not a complete situation. It's more like, you know, listen, I hear these. When I say about problem fixing, it's, for example, a lot of people walk around in life or, or you know, upset about stuff that is fully in their control to change. Mm, I don't like my body. Mm, I hate this. I hate this. Obviously, there are psychological elements to a lot of that stuff that you know people are never going to be satisfied with what they see in the mirror. But you know, like people make a lot of excuses and blame everybody else but themselves. And if the solution is right in front of you, so Chloe, for example, lots of clients will say, you know, I'm just not making the progress. I just didn't think I, uh, uh, you know, I, uh, I'm I'm getting the results I should be. So Chloe emails back, what are you doing? And then they come back and say. Well, actually, I have been a bit, you know, uh, indifferent with the diet. You know, I haven't actually been doing the exercise. I haven't been doing this. But the first reaction was to reach out to someone else. So my reaction is to go, instead of talking around it, is to, go, is to point out the bleeding obvious and go, hold on a minute. You, you're in control. If you don't like we're doing what you're doing, stop doing it. If you don't, if you don't, if you don't want to do that, speak to them. And then there is, the, I think there's a balance to be had between that. But I was always, 
you know, I always went into a game on the weekend knowing that I'd done everything I possibly could in the week to be the best player I could be. And if 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 I hadn't, then when when if the game didn't go well, instead of me making excuses, going well the referee was a bit bad or you know it, we didn't get a lot of ball, I could just turn around and say, do you know what? I didn't do my extra tackling. I missed tackles. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. And and we're very good at humans of, of tricking ourselves and making enough excuses to excuse the fact that we're not t- taking our you know stuff under control. And Chloe's made me realise as well that I've done that myself. You know. That I, I had the certain things in my life that I've allowed to go on and haven't, and haven't addressed it and haven't dealt with it, and yet I get a bit down about it. And she's like, "Well, you know, with all due respect, James, you're in charge of sorting it out." And it and it and it reminds me. But conversely, she's kind of made me a little bit more understanding. But I was very proud of her yesterday. Someone's trying to mug her off for some uh, some payment thing that she doesn't need to pay because it was complete incompetence. And Chloe wrote some really kind of clever article. She's a fantastic writer, very intelligent, brilliant writer actually, and wrote this kind of thing. And I was so proud of her because she was like aggressive, but not in a, we're going to come around and blow your house up kind of way, but was very like clever. And I just loved it. I was like, this is amazing. I'm so proud of how far you've come with your it was viciousness. It's about whether or not I should be paying service charge to my landlord, whose service was so bad that I had two leaks, like incredible amounts of mould growing everywhere in my flat and had to move home for seven months. And uh, he's still trying to charge me service charge, but I know that I can contest it if it's subpar, which it obviously was. Anyway, I read James' email and he was like grinning from ear to ear because he just wants me to be a savage like him. No, but it's just because it's just so many people, you know, you just get these situations where I come in and Chloe's so stressed about, uh, I think, you know, because people are asking questions. And I, I can hear people asking questions about, say, diet and training and having this back and forth. Like Chloe's taking their time. And it's like, if you ever do an online training plan with people, humans very much like to hear training plans and then what they do is they then hear what you're what sarah in the office is doing so they start adding that in then they read about something else they're like oh should i start taking off days and before you know it they've got so many questions instead of the one question which is shut up and follow the plan exactly as i gave it to you don't think don't breathe do as you're told and once you get the results you'll be fine and do you know what and the excuse the answer to any queries you've got is if you knew best you wouldn't look like a potato. So that's oh that's God, that's what James. I would that's what this I would say. This is what I mean about tough love. No, right? but it's bit. It, we, 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 we're prefacing it down for a podcast, but it is essentially true. You know, like I had a bloke I was training, and he he, you know, I play four hours of tennis every day. I'd still like to play four hours of tennis. So I've done only a couple of your workouts. I went, listen, mate, if your if your four hours of tennis a day made you have the body you wanted you wouldn't be come hitting me up for this plan, would you? And it's like, yeah, good point. So it's like, shut up. You can still play tennis, but it doesn't count as any of your exercise because you're obviously motoring around that court at 0.1 miles an hour. Do what you're told and you'll get in shape. And lo and behold, he did what he's told and he got in shape. Kids, um, and I, I think a lot of people are feeling like, yeah, it's a roller coaster of emotions, morning, noon and night. Um, I think the sun being out really... I'd sit, and, I'd sit and get a book off the shelf, sit and read, have a few drinks and relax, I would. That's yes. what I'd do. That's what I'd do. Well, look, give us, give, feel free to call whenever you want for a chat. I'm not doing anything. I was going to call you today, actually. Um, tell Dad if people read as well when he wants. And, uh, yeah. I don't want to be on camera. You're not going to be on camera. No one bloody wants you on camera. Um, as another evening draws to a close, it, oh, 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 I'll turn the light off. Um, ooh, ooh, spooks and watching the Michael Jordan documentary, probably the most inspiring thing I've ever seen. I'm all fired up now, I've got to go to bed. Someone's going to get it. No, I'm joking, I'm going to go to sleep.